What's going on, man? You guys are now tuned back into the Free Sauce Podcast, and we got another banger of our episode today, man. But you already know what we got to do before we get into the episode. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Make sure you hit the like button, comment, share. Make sure you tune in with the Instagram, TikTok as well. Make sure you keep on running the numbers up, man. We want to run to 100 subscribers. We need that done ASAP, man. Um, we got a lot of new things coming. We got some merch coming, a lot of big guests. Interesting topics, interesting episodes. Um, if you want to see anybody on the podcast, hit us in the DM. Any topics you want to see talked about, hit us in the DM as well, man. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the episode. Let our guest go ahead and introduce himself. What up? My name is Anil Gillen. I am a junior computer science student at Illinois State. I am on the track and field team at ISU, and I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Oh, wow. Vancouver. Vancouver. Yes, sir. How is the weather down there? Man, everyone thinks everyone thinks it's so cold. And I'm not going to lie to you, like, the coldest it'll get is maybe 20 Celsius, and the hottest it'll get is 80. So, and do you know what that is in Fahrenheit? Oh, I meant Fahrenheit. My bad, my bad, my bad. Okay. I meant 20, <laughs> 20 degrees Fahrenheit, 80 degrees uh, high of 80. I mean, that's really what it is around year, all year round. But I will say it rains, like, like I'm not even lying, two hundred days out of the year. Damn, it sounds like Africa. It's <laughs> <laughs> not bad at all. Shit, people make it seem like you going to Canada, you finna be free, like you going to Alaska or some shit. Yeah, but nah, nah, nah. It's it's. I mean, I'm three hours living in Chicago. Yeah, I mean, I would say so. I mean, the thing is, like, it's it's super gloomy, which is which is weird. I mean, oh. so I'm, I'm three hours north of Seattle, so it's uh. It's a lot like Seattle. You guys been to Seattle? I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I want to go though. Man, you guys got to check it out. West Coast, man, that that'll change your life, bro. Okay. Yeah. What about the West Coast? You like? Um. What's so different? I'd say with Vancouver, like you get a little bit of everything. You get like you get forests, like real greenery. You get ocean. I mean, I live I live literally like two minutes from the ocean. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, man. God bless. Which, Which ocean? This is crazy. A uh, Pacific Ocean. Okay. Pacific Ocean. For and, people that didn't know. <laughs> 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 so you get you get beaches that go with that and then also um like mountain ranges um okay. whistlers out over there so we hosted the 2010 uh winter olympics and so yeah you get you get a little bit of everything out there but it's it's, it's a lot different from from the midwest for sure oh yeah the, i, I want to get away from the midwest yeah. i just i just i just can't yeah <laughs> like my body's still where, where would you go me? Yo, you be saying that. Where would you say, well, besides Africa, I know you said. Yeah, you said Africa, <laughs> my body's besides, still in Africa, bro. Besides that, where would you go if a, if a, it had to be in the United States? Anywhere that's hot, I would go to Arizona. Arizona, yeah, yeah, I would go to anywhere that's hot. Okay, yeah. any anywhere that's hot, because me personally, just my body just can't do it. It be like it be 70, 75 and I'm freezing. I say it's, yeah. get, it's getting to that time now. It's thirties and forties type yeah. shit. And you know how I be bandled up. <laughs> what's what's your still rocking hoodie? You got going on, <laughs> what's your origins though? Where are you guys? Both of you guys. Where y'all from? Me, I'm from uh, Ghana, okay. West Africa. Okay. Shit, yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm from here in the United States. Yeah, <laughs> hey, he got his culture to this, but it's all good. It's all good. The original, man. Original, 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 original. This love. He still gets some love. You know? So, you a full time, you a full time student, along with also you know participating in track and field. Like, how do you manage that time? You know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. feel like it's a lot. For sure, man. For sure, it is. I think. I think it's the resources that that we have, you know, as as athletes, you know, they always got a good support staff around us. You know, we have tutors, we have uh, nutritionists, we have coaches, you know, we have sports psychologists. Um, and so I think that really helps us keep it all together. I mean, it's it's definitely it's definitely a lot of work, man. You know, you know, being a student athlete is like a job, you know, mentally mentally takes a really big toll on you, on your body, it takes a really big toll, but I mean, it's it's worth it, man, at the end of the day. I just I love what I do. Every day I wake up happy and you know, I can't complain. Yeah, that's that's really something that you hear from a lot of people that like enjoy what they do. Like a lot of people go as far as like they t they tell you they love it. Yeah. And, like what drew you? Like where did that love come from? Like you know, like is it from the get go you knew track track and field was my thing, or was it like something you had to work progressively towards? You know, I I don't think I had the the amount of talent that like natural talent that a lot of people had have that I compete with now. You know, I think I think I had to work for a lot uh, for sure, and. I think I think you you know what I knew the opportunities that track would give me. I knew uh, from a very young age I knew I could travel a lot with track. I had a lot of great role models out in Vancouver. Um, 
a lot of friends who had traveled a lot for meets all over the country, all over, all over the world. And I said, man, I, you know, I could really, I could really make something of this. And, uh, I had a dream, um, I would say freshman year of high school, you know, I had a goal, um, that was to, you know, run division one track and I was able to make that, you know, make that happen. So it's, it's, uh, it's been a good feeling. It's been a good feeling for sure. You spoke into existence. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something you hear a lot with, um, like <clears throat> division one, just like college athletes, period. A lot of them speak that shit into existence. They like, this is something that I said, like my freshman, sophomore, junior year was like, okay, I want to go D3. I want to go D2. I want to go D1. You know, I want to, I want to get that scholarship type shit. A lot of them, that was a goal for them. Right. And they, they made this shit happen one way or another because they used the resources around them. Um, put in the right work and, and everything fell into place. You know, I love it so much. I mean, I say this, bro, and I, and I, I preach this so much is that college ath athletics, man, as a whole can change your life so much. Like, I mean, I will say this, you know, it does, it does take a lot out of us, man. You know, I know a lot of my teammates, you know, they got anxiety, they got depression. I mean, we had, we had recently lost, um, one of our old, old teammates. He wasn't a teammate of mine. Um, he had quit the team before I came, but you know, he unfortunately passed away, committed suicide, uh, just cause of mental health. But, um, you know, we, we put so much into it, but I think the opportunities that you get out of it is, is crazy. I mean, my roommate and one of my teammates, he, um, you know, shout out Khalil Ross, uh, triple jumper. Uh, he's from Springfield, Illinois. He, um, he had never traveled outside of Illinois, you know, going into college and in our freshman year alone, we went to like Tennessee, Mississippi, uh, Michigan. We had went to Iowa. We'd went to Missouri, we went to all these places. And he's like, I've never left the state before. And I was like, man, you know, this, this this thing you know college athletics it can really it can really change your life so i mean i tell any kid who wants to do it man go for it like it's four years you know you're never I, you know regret's the worst thing man don't have regret go for it man it's gonna be worth it. you're gonna learn a lot and you touched on it like it, it's to the point where it kind of gets you out of the comfort zone you know like you said he ain't never gone out of like outside the state of illinois and i feel like people that could travel, take that for granted, because sometimes, you know, you get to see everything, you get to, you know, see other uh, possibilities, you get to see other experiences and all stuff like that, but you don't consider, like, the next individual might not have the same type of resources, right? right? And you, you just, uh, you must, must, like, most of society, we overlook that what we are, what we, what we are grateful for. Yeah, you know? yeah, man, 100%, and, you know, all of us, you know, we try and, we try and come out and act like every practice, every meet, it's the last one, man. Cause I mean, you know, this, this is really a blessing for all of us, man. Just, I mean, life in general, man, like, I mean, it can be taken away from us at any moment. And so we just want to put our best foot forward, man, do, do what we can to represent the school in the best way. Yes. And then also going along that same line too, like what events do you run in the track and field? Yeah. 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 So I do the decathlon. And so for those of you who don't know what the decathlon is, so it's a, it's um it's a total of 10 events that all count for one score so it's four runs three throws and three jumps and what those are is <clears throat> it'll be uh the 100 meter long jump shot put high jump 400 you'll do all five of those events in one day not back to back i mean you'll do them you know you'll have about half an hour in between so do that one day and then the next day you'll come back and you'll do the 110 meter hurdles you'll do Shit. discus yeah <laughs> uh pole vault Javelin, and then the fifteen hundred, which is a hundred meters less than a mile. So your stamina gotta be crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stamina gotta be crazy. Hey. Training gotta be off the walls. We be you, running, yeah. You, you gotta, but not even that. You gotta know how to do the field shit too. You gotta know yeah. how to do all type of uh, exercises, all type of events. So your shit is. Yeah. You ain't you, you really a CEO type shit out there. Right? <laughs> yeah, talk about the difference yeah, between yeah. CEOs and employees. Employees know one part. This nigga know everything. <laughs> Damn me. Hey man, I mean, yeah, I just I just came for practice. That's why I got the that's why I got the hoodie on right now. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, and you had said before we started the podcast, you said um, touching on you said twenty hours a week is what y'all doing right now. Yeah. So the way the NCAA works is when you're out of season, you'll you'll do eight hours. And uh, when you're in season, you'll do 20 hours. And so we, we only had eight hour weeks for like maybe three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and now we, we're into 20 hour weeks. So. And then how is it broken down for people that don't know? So for us, we'll, we'll practice six days a week, 
Monday through Saturday. Yeah, we still got Saturday morning practice, man. That, that, that'd be the worst. What time is that? It's at nine. It's at nine. nine, nine okay, yeah, not nothing bad. crazy. Nothing crazy. But uh, so we'll uh, we'll practice six out of the seven days, uh, and then on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday we'll double up. Uh, and that's and that's right now in the off season. I mean, when we get in season, I mean, we could easily be practicing, you know, two or three times a day. Whether that be, you know, we wake up in the morning and we do like a technical a technical session where we focus on one event. And then we come back in the afternoon and we get like a hard running workout in. And then later in the evening, we go lift weights. Shit. Yeah. Uh, that, that sounds brutal. So yeah. I'm, so do you have the chance to like have a fucking job or anything? <laughs> <laughs> he is, he's speaking like he's wondering. Like, I'm saying, like, because I'm saying no, three times a day, it's like you, you, you won't really have time to do something because it's like, okay, I got to come back and do this two more times yeah. type shit. So you I, 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 classes in between type <laughs> shit. I, I do have a job, yes. Okay. Yeah, so I work at, um, I intern right now at a company based in St. Louis okay. called Worldwide Technology. So they're a global um a global technology service provider, a solutions provider, I should say. And um and so what I do there is I'm a consulting systems engineer intern. But uh yeah, I work I work remote from uh from here and I you know, I, I get in about twenty hours a week. Okay. I wanna commend you for that though. Like, <laughs> I appreciate that's it. not easy. Yeah, you know, it's um it's definitely a lot, man. But uh, I mean I've always had the mindset of, you know, I came here uh, as an international student, you know, I came, I came in with a job, man. You know, I got a job to do. I got something to take care of. And I just want to, you know, put my best foot forward, have no regrets. And yeah, man. I was going to say, having the remote as well, that should help out too. Ah, uh, dude. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Like a man. I'm a computer science major. So I just, I mean, you can't beat it. Like, I mean, I'll have a meeting at 8 a.m. and I'll wake up at 7.55, right. roll out of bed, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right, to the COVID days. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, but I mean, that's, I, on that note, I mean that's just the way the world's going now. I mean, remote work. Remote. I mean it. I mean, what it, I mean, I get such better performance out of my work because I'm in my environment, I'm in my space to you know pr- produce well. But then also for companies, I mean, they can expand across across the globe, right? So if, if you're getting a job in Chicago, I mean, you're not just competing with the dudes in Chicago. You're competing with people all over the world. Oh, yeah. Because I can go I can go to like India or China and I can get a developer. I don't need to just look in Chicago. I can go all over the world. So that just helps companies out so much more. But. Yeah. I think they're doing this. I think a, f- a couple of companies are doing a uh, study on that, trying to see how uh, workers' performance, workers' happiness, and like how they do their job remote. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like it could overall be a good turnout. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But I want to, I want to go back. To, yeah, yeah. My I bad, wanna, my bad. No, 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 no. You chilling? I want to go back to. Uh, you said you do the hundred meters, and then you got to do a one point five. Yeah, the fifteen hundred meter. Yeah, the, yeah, fi- the fifteen hundred meter. That's the last event. Okay, so check it out. How do you go from Strictly sprinting, right? To okay, now I'm go, I'm kind of doing the mile, but I'm not doing the mile. Right, so right, right. How do you train your body to go from one side to another? Hey, I mean, it's kind of like he said. I mean, you got to be kind of like a CEO, right? You got to be like a jack of all trades. You you have to be able to do everything. And and so we we train a lot. I mean, we train a lot, especially out of season. We uh we do a lot of more long distance running, and then when we get in season, we focus more on sprinting. But I mean. Yeah, you got to be all around, man. Shit. Yeah. Man, it, it just sounds like just a whole different body to, just a whole different language to my body. <laughs> but I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I mean, track and field is one of those uh, sports where there's not a lot of money. There's there's not a lot of money. I mean, maybe like the top like 1%. And it's hard to go to pro. What's that? It's hard to go pro. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, 100%. I mean, like I said, I mean, the top 5% will maybe make $50,000 a year off of sponsors because there's, there's no contracts. You know, there's no league, nothing like that. I had a buddy of mine, actually. Um, his name's Django Lovett. Uh, shout out Django. He's a, he's a good friend of mine from my hometown. He had finished eighth in the Olympics Wow. in high jump. And I, and I remember asking him um, how much, uh, you know, he had asked me for a ride one day back from... Uh, back from class uh, back to go to go to practice and i you know i joked i was like hey man you know you're a pro like just you know get a car and uh, i'm not going to disclose how much how much money he made because yeah. that, that's his business yeah, that's but his business. but i'm just going to say you know he um 
he 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 really broke it down to me. He's like, listen, man, you know, track and field is not basketball. Because right. if you're, you know, if, in in track, if you're number eight, like he is in the world, or if you're in basketball, if you're number eight in the NBA and you're eight, eight in the world, I mean, you're making two hundred million, right? But if you're number eight in track and field, it's it's a whole nother it's a whole nother thing, man. It's a whole nother thing. So it's a different ball game. Yeah. So people, what I'm trying to say is, people here, especially at this level, is I mean, we're doing it for passion, right? We, mm. we love what we do, man. We love running. It's, it's our escape. And it's, it's it's what we love to do, man. So typically, how many people is it uh, competing in what you do? So for my event, I mean, if we go to conference, we'll usually get like 10 or 15 people. So it's it's pretty scarce. I mean, it's obviously not as popular as the 100 meter. And I mean, man, how was the like, scoring broke down? So every event, I mean, there's a calculator math. You know, they, they have a whole calculator where uh -huh. based off of what you are, what, what, however you do in the event, whether that be a throw, a jump, or a run, they'll put that number into a calculator. And then you'll be able to, you'll get like a score, like a, like a number score. It's usually somewhere in the hundreds um, to, uh, to calculate that. And then they all add up at the end of the two days. So, yeah. That's, that's really interesting. Like, I, I knew track and field had, like, scores, but I didn't know, like, they had a whole calculator trying to add these numbers up. I feel like, I ain't going to lie, mate. Is this is there somebody, like, manually typing it in? Yeah, yeah. Usually at the meet, they'll have an official who will be scoring, tallying up the scores after every single event, and they'll, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And when did you, like, get into the uh, triathlon, right? Uh, decathlon. 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 Yeah, when yeah, did you, yeah. like, get into... I did a, you start that in high school or your high school had that shit or what? So I really, I started, I would say, um, I'd say freshman year, really, I started, I mean, I started running track like seventh grade, seventh grade, you know, and I was, I was fat. <laughs> I was fat, you know, I was a big soccer player. Um, you know, I was, I was pretty good at soccer. Um, soccer was kind of in my family. My sister, um, also went D1 for soccer, um, she actually went to ICU as well, played soccer at ICU, and now she graduated and she's uh, playing at Johns Hopkins University in, oh, wow. in Baltimore. Shout out Priya. Um, but I would say, so I, I mean, back to the story. I mean, in seventh grade, I was you know, kind of getting a little fat, and so my mom put me in, uh, in uh, track and field, and I really didn't start taking it seriously until the ninth grade. That's when I started doing the decathlon, and then from there, man, I mean, I just, you know, put the work in, put my head down. I think uh, sophomore year, I finished fifth at nationals, and then junior year, I'd won it all, so, yeah. Oh, wow. You won it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that, like, what's that feeling, like, winning all that? Oh, uh, it was, it, that's a funny story, it's actually. It's a journey, man. Yeah, dude. I remember, I was, I was in Montreal, actually, when, when I won. My dad and I had went out, and, uh, and I had won, and you know, I crossed the line, whatever, and uh, I walked up over to him. He's like, you don't look happy, and I was <laughs> like... I mean, it, it was a weird feeling. It was a weird feeling for sure. But I mean, all I knew was at, after that, my life had changed for real because th after that, you know, I was getting college offers. Um, you know, I was, you know, I, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy for sure. And so I started getting a lot of recognition. I mean, it was cool, uh, but it was humbling at the same time for sure. So, yeah. How would you say it was humbling? Um, cause I don't think when it first happened, it, I, I don't think I handled it the, the best way. You know, I, you know, I kind of took my foot off the gas for training. Um, you know, I started eating unhealthy. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't locked in much. And, uh, you know, the right people had called me out, whether that be coaches, you know, my parents, some of my friends. Um, and so I was, it was, it was humbling. It was humbling for sure. And I had to take a step back and be like, you know, maybe I did do something, something pretty cool by winning nationals, but there's been a lot more people in my position and there's a lot more that I still want to do. Okay. Right. Put your head down and keep working. Yes. So, how has having the right group of support helped with your journey? Yeah, dude, it's it's crazy. And I, I will say this: like, I'm so grateful for my parents. You know, I, I call my parents. I mean, I just got off the phone with my mom. Uh, I, you know, I call call her all the time. Um, and it's 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 so big, man. Because whenever I'm there, you know, I call them. You know, for for whatever I need. Uh, it's, 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 it's so important, man. And, and I, and I preach that so much. I tell people, man, get your, get your support system, you know, make sure your make sure your circle's got the right people, people who have the best, you know, interest in mind for you. And if, if that's not, and at times it can be hard, right? Maybe like, maybe your siblings, right? Or maybe your homie from kindergarten, you know, maybe they switch up and they don't have that, that they don't have your best interest in mind. And sometimes you got to cut them out and that's hard. But once you find your support system, man, that's that's what really helps you be successful. Yes, you are touched on it. Like, 
you you said it. It's hard sometimes just letting go of what you've always known. You know, like oh, he's always been there for me. I had to cut him off, but it's just so hard to let him go or like let that yeah. person go. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like, what what would you like? What would be steps that you can maybe give to an individual to help overcome that? Um, I think you really got to know what you want. You know, what what do you want in life, right? And it doesn't matter whatever you it doesn't matter as long as you're happy and you know what you want and you're going to go towards that that's that's all that matters so if you want to chase if you want to chase money man go chase money don't let people tell you that that's wrong right um you know if you want to if you want to go be if you want to go pro in basketball don't let anyone tell you that you can't you know i grew up in a culture where you know so i'm, I'm south asian you know my, my family comes from india and my culture is hey man you come here you go to school and you do nothing else go to school wake up eat whatever go to school come back do homework go to bed keep going right and for me like and i'm so lucky because i'm second generation so my parents weren't as weren't as hard as that were whereas my grandparents were really tough on that um you know they wanted me to just be a student and i was like nah man i got i got bigger aspirations than just that and so i think once you figure out what you want in life you can you'll be able to tell who's with you and who's not that is, that is facts that is facts he just put it right on the head that is facts <laughs> Yeah, you said, um, what did you say? You was like... The culture? Nah, basically, like, figuring out who you are and basically, yeah. like, um, letting other people, like, oh, that's not good for you, you shouldn't do that. Basically, just sticking with what you know What you know makes you happy. That's the biggest thing. Like, don't let people come in and be like, ah, oh, um, that didn't work out for me, so I don't think you should try that. Um, a lot of this percentage of people make it there, so I don't think you should shoot for that. I don't think you right. should do this. Let, just letting other people uh, deflect their own fears yeah. and pass judgments on you. That's all it is. Just yeah. sticking with your mind. Like you said, what makes you happy, you got to figure that out, understand that. Once you figure out what makes you happy, man, just just keep going full throttle on yeah, that. Yeah, 100%, man, 100%. You are touched a little bit on the culture. So, like, pretty much I'm wondering, and I feel like people listening to this might be wondering. So, <laughs> so I'm wondering, like, how is that like did you grow up with your grandparents around yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah i did so how was that culture like having them around and also having your parents around you say you're a second gen yep. student so yep. pretty much how did they were you able to get them to understand that okay i am more than just a student right right so let me let me let me uh break it down a little bit more so when i say second gen i'm, I'm a second gen um born in Canada, so my grandparents had immigrated from India, okay. um, and they had come over um, into into Canada. And so, uh, so three of my four grandparents, one of my grandparents, were born in, in Vancouver. That was my mom's dad, okay. and um, and the other three had immigrated from India. One of them was uh, uh, had walked over. She's actually from the Pakistan side of the part of India that was Pakistan, and then partition happened. Yes. She had to walk, um, you know, with you know the, the millions of people um, over to the Indian side, and she immigrated now to Canada but to answer your question I think I think um it's the culture like you're actually around like the actual culture like they come from that right she grew up in that and having her bring that to my household you know it it changes your mindset a hundred percent you're more you're more grateful you're more humble because they come from humble beginnings mm -hmm. and you know my, my grandparents didn't come from India with you know with millions of dollars they came here with like 50 bucks in their pocket right and they just grind they just grind and they make it work, and um, and they did that for us, right, to give us those opportunities. So it's it's uh, it's it's crazy for sure, and I'll forever be grateful. In a sense, it's pretty much like they did the hard work to make your life as easy as possible. In a sense, yeah. that's what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, dude. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. And also going along, pretty much like you say, you know, they strive for you to do better and always, you know, get involved in stuff like that. So pretty much. I did in track and field. How else do you get involved on campus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, good question. I appreciate that. So, um, so two things, two main things. Um, uh, I'm president of the cybersecurity club. That's one thing that I do. Um, so, lead that club uh, through the school of IT and you know put on events, try and get kids out to hackathons, um, career fairs. Really try and get kids an opportunity to come in, man. If they're interested about the club, learn about whatever, um, and then. Uh, you know, no matter what you, 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 if you're a business major, if you're an English major, I don't care. Come in, man. You want to learn. You want to be here. Put yourself in a better position. I want to provide that platform for you guys, that safe environment. And so that's one thing I do, cybersecurity club. But then also I'm the, um, I'm the lead presidential student ambassador. And so the presidential student ambassadors are a new, um, 
there's a new program that we started up uh, through the office of the president with uh, President Kinsey at ICU. And the goal of that program is to get um, groups of students at presidential events. Um, and so what we found is, you know, the president goes to hundreds of events every single year. And people at those events tend to be like cabinet members, um, faculty, uh, alumni, uh, donors, all those people. And we want to try and give students an opportunity to sit in front of those people, you know, network, tell their story, learn from their stories. And at the end of the day, make connections and have those donors and alumni have a better connection back to ISU. And it's, it's a two way street, right? Because as students, I'm going to be able to open up my perspective so much more, but then also as a donor and alumni, I'm going to be able to say, wow, you know, I just met this, you know, this really cool kid named Austin, right? He's got a podcast, right? And he's, you know, he's grown it from, nothing into something and you know hopefully they'll come back and they'll say you know what i look at icu in a, in a different light in a better light so that's that's the goal of the program that is that is a really big role that's a really really big role so you say you basically go to any event that the president is at um, basically basically is yeah. this like um is it separated by like regions like how do you get to the um figure out okay do i get to go to alabama or do i get to go to mississippi or is it only in illinois it'll be usually events on campus so obviously okay. she'll go to events like she'll go to um, I, you know she'll go to like football games and stuff like that away games but i mean we, we we won't do that i mean we'll just go to events here so for example um uh we'll go to like football games uh the football games will sit up in her suite she'll have like a pre-game tent and so we'll go there we'll you know network do our thing <clears throat> and then this morning actually uh, we had a donors breakfast that uh, I went to with community, like CEOs of within the community, um, business owners in the community. Um, and so I went to that one, um, that event. And then actually last night as well, I went to one that it was a fundraiser for the basketball team. So there's a good number of donors and alumni there. And so that was a, it was a cool experience. And also I feel like it's also like you touched on it. The donors seeing how much, how their money is being used to help actually fund the school and the students. I'm more likely to help, want to help out more because he's like, okay, if this person is coming out of this school successful, that means there's a higher chance of the next individual also coming out of this school successful. And, you know, people just love helping when they know that their money's being used the right way. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I'll, I'll tell you guys a little story. Um, what really made me want to start this program and really build it up was, uh, you know, so this summer, this summer I was flying out to Phoenix, actually, and I um, and on the way, the airport was on the way. One of my buddy's house was on the way to the airport. I'm not going to put him on blast, but um, yes. he, um, you know, I said, hey, man, your, your brother cuts hair. Let me let me come through and let me get my hair cut. Um, you know, a little, little uh, quick fade before I go out there. And... Um, uh, I remember he said, okay, yeah, come through to my house. And so I went to his house and I pulled up and it was like, it was totally like ghetto. It was ghetto. Like, you know, windows are, you know, bashed in, you know, houses all around, you know, people, you know, it's, it's, it, it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest of areas. And, you know, him and I, you know, we talk, you know, obviously I, I learned his story, all that stuff. He's one of, you know, like 10 siblings. Um, and, you know, he really, he's from the trenches, I'm not going to lie. And, <laughs> and it's funny because, you know, him and I were teammates and we come from two totally different, totally different spectrums because I come from, you know, Vancouver, Canada, where, I mean, I have a buddy who has five different BMWs in his driveway, right? And whatever one he wants to take to school, he'll take it, you know? And um, it's a whole nother, we come from two totally different worlds. And if I can put him in an opportunity, students like him, give them an opportunity to, you know, meet people from different, different backgrounds, different cultures who have done so many different things in their lives. Like who am I to hold that back, man? Like Absolutely. we all come here at the end of the day, we all come here to college to better ourselves, man. And as many people as I can better, the better, uh, the better it is. So, yeah. Like in a sense too, you get a sense of like gratitude and like giving back. Like, it's just yeah. like, Whoa, I'm I'm just I'm not only thinking about myself. I'm trying to make sure I can help put other people in situations. You yeah, know? Yeah. And I feel like that's all that we like as a college kid, yeah, it's it's hard to, you know, go out of your comfort zone and meet people and all that. But I ain't gonna lie, if you utilize the resources that are being provided, if you go out of your way to research the resources on your school that's being provided, you can you can be better off so much. It's just most of us come in, in college, you know, scared to get out of our comfort zone. Because it's just like, shit, how do I get out of my comfort zone? <laughs> well, bro, a lot of people, they don't got the most outgoing <laughs> personality. So that's one thing. They, I don't know, they be scared. Shit, time is 
Procrastination shit Niggas don't just Procrastinate in the classroom That's in all areas of life oh, yeah. That people oh, yeah. procrastinate at um, Procrastination They afraid Just it's a lot of things But like he said man Get get in, get involved Go out there Do what you wanna do Take advantage of resources Take advantage of people um, I think that's the biggest way that you're going to advance. Take advantage of everybody. Everybody around you, they there for a reason. The people around you, they there for a reason. So use them. Shit. If it might sound bad, but use them. No, Shit. yeah. That's, as a human, you're supposed to be using each other to better each other's yeah. life. Yeah. Use your resources, man. <laughs> that's literally I resources. Mean, honestly, network equals net worth. Right? Yes. The better your network is, the, the richer you're going to be. Right? And when you, let me say this. So when you get around, you know, all these people that are like wealthy, got big companies, got these, like, what, what was, well, how did, what did you feel like the first week? I feel like, cause like the first week probably was the toughest week. Cause yeah. you know, you, you, you like, how do I approach this? You right. Know? So how did you go about that? You know what? It's, it's one of the, and the best advice I got was just be genuine, man. Yes. Like everyone, everyone has a story and you know for the most part people want to hear about it right people want to know where you're from people want to know about your family people want to know about what you're involved in right and we're all different man we're all different in some way shape or form and i just found man being genuine just telling them like hey man this is what i do this is what i'm passionate about that it comes off it comes off uh, the best way because people can see through the bullshit oh yeah I was just gonna oh, say, yeah. man. Bro, bro, like, people could read that shit from out of the way. Like, oh, he he finna script me, he bullshit, bullshit me. He not, he don't really care about what yeah. he's saying. He don't really care about what I'm saying right now. Especially when you're talking to successful people and, and people that that have been through a lot of shit. They they know when somebody's just trying to get something out of them, or when they don't really give a fuck about what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. you have, like that. Think about it like this: they have interacted with so many people. You gotta be different. <laughs> That's why, like, they've already talked to them, near anybody that want to talk to them, and anybody that has been wanting an opportunity out of them, they have talked to. So, what makes you different for them to actually listen to your story? I don't know how to yeah. stand out. Oh what, yeah. What, what what separates you from everybody else? Shit. What like what the most important thing people say like we trying to figure shit figure out life. I guess is what comes easy for you but hard for others. Like what's just natural for you, and it might it might take a, lo a while for you to figure it out. Type shit, but yeah. that's the one question you need to constantly ask yourself. What am I good at? That's very just very challenging for others. Right. So others seem to struggle at it. It doesn't come as quick and easy to them. I mean, but I, I would say this, I mean, to piggyback on that, like, you're not going to know what makes you special until you get involved and you meet mm -hmm. and you talk to people. So mm -hmm. true. don't be afraid, man. You know, go out there, do, you know, obviously try and find your passion, you know, based on what you're passionate right now about, but just put yourself out there, man. I mean, nothing bad's going to happen. And always be willing to try something new. A hundred percent. It's just like, let's say you see the, you know, a new food place open up on your street or up down the street or whatever. And then let's say everybody mean everybody mean you know either bashing it or talking trash about it, and then you know some people are most likely not gonna go try it because other people have experienced it. And maybe for all you know, you just have two different taste buds. So you know yeah. you go out there one time, you go enjoy the food, and then you fall in love with the place. <laughs> so pretty much it's just just. Take the time out of your day to go do something that you actually might want to do. Exactly. I mean, it's what we talked about before, right? About finding your support system. I mean, whatever works for you is going to work for you, but you don't know until you go out there and you try it, right? You're not going to figure out what exactly you want until you try different things. So Just touching on that, like, going out there and doing it type of shit. I seen some shit on Instagram that basically was like... um Potential was like overrated type shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It I, is. I, I couldn't, like... It is. I don't know. I couldn't like formulate the words of, of what, <laughs> but that's perfect. Like that's the perfect type of phrase. It, potential it really is, is overrated because it's like, yeah, everybody, all three of us right here got potential. We all potential just means we got ideas and and ambitions to do things. Yeah. yeah. Everybody in the world has ideas. We all get ideas. We all want to do things. We all would want to have like nice things, but. The only thing that really separates us is the fucking action, the yeah. work, the, oh, the yeah. doing yeah. part. And yeah. to go along that same line, I had seen some that said, "You know where the you know where the richest place in the world is? Where? Where? The graveyard. Yeah, that's where all the dreams yeah. go to die. Yeah, you've had all these ideas, but you were not ever able, able to bring it to life. Yeah, and that's, that's scary. That's facts. That's that's." That's literally what separates everybody. Like we all have like separates good, uh, good companies and great companies. It's like innovation type shit. Like 
all companies, all CEOs, executives, they might have ideas and shit like that. But it's the companies that actually take take the step and be like, we're going to change this shit. We're going to do this. We're going to try this. We're going to do this. And those are the companies that come out on top because they, they take a step. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's damn near like what he did. Pretty much finding finding an open gap yeah, and just building something out of it. Like, yeah, 100%. Let me touch on this, though. I mean, but what came with that opportunity was, I mean, actually a big downfall. And we had talked a little bit about yeah. this off air. Um, so I'll give you guys a little bit more context um, for the viewers. But it's um, so uh, back in March of this year, last the end of last school year, I ran, um, ran to be the student trustee to be on the board of trustees at ISU. And so basically what that is, is whenever there's a financial agreement over half a million dollars, the board needs to needs to vote on it. And so, I mean, that's anything, you know, that could be, you know, anything done with athletics, anything done with like the multicultural center, like we're talking about. And then also like the dorm, like, I mean, the dorm's a $188 million project. And the board of trustees, 188. Shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is one of the biggest dormitory in the, in the They nation. want to build a new one. Yeah. Oh, they want to build a new one. Yeah, a new one. Over, Wadi? over by the rack. Yeah, over oh, by the rack. Oh, shit. Yeah. Shit. Oh, that yeah. big ass uh, field? Yeah, the big field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and so and so the board of trustees, um, the board of trustees will vote on those things, right? So anyone has a financial plan over a half a million dollars, they got to vote on it. And so what the, the board is made up of, I think it's seven members. Yeah, seven members. And six of the seven are appointed by the governor of Illinois. Oh wow! Yeah, and so they, they'll apply, and the governor will interview them. He'll um, all that stuff, and, the, and he'll appoint them. And then the seventh person is a student, one of the students at ISU, and has the same voting power as the other trustees. So you're sitting on a board with you know millionaire, you know other people on the board, like millionaires on the board, you know who've had all these experiences, but then you represent you know all twenty thousand of the student student voices, and so. For me, I'd, I'd seen that opportunity and I was like, you know, man, you know, it's out of my comfort zone. I'm not in no way, shape or form that I think I was going to be qualified for that. But I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Put my best foot forward and I'm going to run. And so I ran in that election and I won. Um, so it was back in, uh, it was April, start of April, I'd won the election. And then, um, you know, unfortunately, um, they had uh, they had made some mistakes on the uh, eligibility process. You know, I had made them aware that I was an international student, and um, you have to be a resident of Illinois in order to serve on the board. And um, you know, yes, you know, one thing led to another. They they had missed that, and so actually, they would given me a call after after I'd won. You know, like 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 six or seven weeks after I'd won the election, like I was recognized, all that stuff as trustee. I was just about to get sworn in, and they had told me like, hey man, you know, we messed up. Actually, you can't be, you're ineligible because you're um, an international student on an F1 visa, you're considered a non-resident. So I'm not a resident of the state. But I mean, you know, obviously setbacks, you know, they happen, you know, life yes. is your, your character is judged by, you know, how you react to what happens to you, not what happens to you. Mm-hmm. And I was able to, um, to keep the connections that I had with, you know, the president, um, the chief of staff, you know, the athletic director, I was able to keep, keep good relationships with them. And when they had an opportunity to, you know, lead the presidential student ambassadors, they said, Hey, you know, man, we think you're a great fit. So, you know, take it, take the program. But I mean, to circle back, it's, you know, you're not going to be able to, to find these opportunities unless you put yourself out there. So, yeah. And, yeah. <sighs> also like, I don't know. I feel like, like I, would, I like I don't know how somebody might react to that. You know, I was just finna ask, bro. How did yeah. you respond? I mean, obviously you got yeah. the other other position, but it's like, how did you respond to like? Yeah. I like, bro. You, that, that's like <laughs> that's I don't even. Question. I don't even. I don't yeah. even know what it's like. But that's like Take shit. Take off my jacket. Yeah, <laughs> for, this for sure. That, but that's like telling. <laughs> I don't even know, bro. That's like telling someone, yeah, you we, you got this D1 scholarship or whatever, yeah. full ride, and then paperwork come back somewhere, somehow your credit's fucked up or something. Yeah. Um, And, and they tell you, you got to take it back. You can't. Yeah. That ain't to us <laughs> no more, bro. Um, You know what, man? I, I say this. You know, it, it was a roller coaster of emotions. I mean, uh, you know, when I first won, uh, Right after I won, I actually got broken up with uh, because, Damn. yeah, yeah, my ex-girlfriend, she was like, you know, you're arrogant, you're self-centered, all that stuff. And I mean, it, it really was a shock to me because I guess I changed up without even realizing it. You know, I, I came cocky, you know, I'd walk around with a little bit of chip on my shoulder. And well, but before you continue, I mean, I, I hate when people say that. Cause it's like, bro, we, we, we don't like the, the Jay-Z fucking quote, bro. We don't fucking work this hard to stay the same. same. We, yeah. we, we don't like yeah, we, 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 we keep the same 
values and morals and shit like yeah. that but we we do change which, which, i mean which kind of kind of confused me because it's like you know, how am i arrogant and self-centered if you know i'm literally serving on a board that betters the students and i mean i'm not getting paid for it i'm not getting i mean to be on the board you're not getting paid nothing right and so it's all a volunteer all that stuff you know how am i being selfish for you know, putting myself out there and trying to help out other people but i mean yeah, um, that's besides the point. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead. You go ahead and continue. <laughs> um, uh, but what I what I was saying was, yeah. So, you know, obviously I'm on a high, right? You know, obviously I'm feeling really good. You know, I've, I've met all these people, um, all these great people, and you know, I mean, it's funny. I was I was walking around campus, and people were like, "Man, you're the trustee." Uh, you know, random people, and I'm like, I'm like, "Hey, man, I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you." Um, and um, and then when I got that call, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I, I cried, you know, cause I was like, man, I, I put, I put my best foot forward, you know, and when you go into an election, man, it's either, it's all or nothing, either you win it all or you lose it all. And mm. I went it and I, I won it all. And I was like, damn, this is awesome. And then, you know, like, you know, snap of a finger, bro, it was gone. It was taken away. Yeah. And I think it was, it was a humbling experience first, you know, first and foremost, but it also taught me like, you know, just be grateful, man, because they, this shit can be taken away from you at any moment, bro, without you even realizing it. And also, it's like, oh, man, you know, you can just because you fall, you know. Don't mean stay down. Nah, fall seven times, get back up. Oh, you yeah. back, get back up eight times, oh, right? Yeah. And so that's that's really what I learned from it. But yeah, it was it was a roller coaster, a roller coaster for sure. <laughs> but also, you like you, the whole theme of this podcast, what I've been getting away is. Your no, your no working. You know. Yep, yep. When did you realize you were a good conversationalist? When did you realize you could go up to people and actually have a conversation? Um, I think it was really college recruiting. Like, so the way the way the way recruiting works, and and I'll speak to this a little bit. Um, as a track and field athlete um, and being from a different country, like it's totally different. Like I had to, it's not like, it's not like scouts were flying to Vancouver and coming to watch me compete. Like, like you see with basketball, maybe, right. I mean, a track and field just doesn't have money like that, but also, you know, I'm in, I'm in a whole other country. Right. And I, it, it, I wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> like I was, I was, I was decent. I was decent, but I wasn't like, you know, Olympic man, place. yeah, nah, nah. I was like, yeah, we got to fly out to see this kid. Uh, a buddy of mine, a buddy of mine, actually um, him and I had both gotten uh, recruited recruited to Purdue we had both taken official visits out there and I remember him and I were both from you know probably 20 minutes away um the same coach that recruited both of us you know he was really really good he had went home he had uh, met, he had uh, made a visit to his house like a whole family visit for him but didn't come see me so that's a little bit of perspective of like hey, I was I was okay I wasn't that good but anyways um you as an athlete kind of from where I'm from you had to reach out to schools you had to email guys and be like, hey, I'm interested. And I would say without, throughout my recruiting process, I probably sent like 800 emails. Oh, shit. Yeah, to schools like, hey, man, um, I'm, introduced, I'm interested in your, in, your, in your program. This is what I do, man. This is my name. This is my name, all that stuff. And out of the 800 I sent, I would say I probably only got like 80 responses. Mm. So yeah. that's 10%. 10% though, but, yeah. <laughs> 10%, you know, <laughs> not bad. But... Um, I think that's really when I learned, like being just being on the phone with these guys. Like I was able to have a conversation with them. I was able to connect with them, and um, I think that's when I learned, like you know, I'm a good networker. So yeah. And like you, pretty much ever since that day, you have been taking it to the next level and to the next level. And I feel like that's something we, like we should give you credit for. Like I appreciate that. It's just the fact that like you realized that you were good at something, and then yeah. kept working on it, capitalized on it, really. You know what, man? It's I think it's I can't take all the credit, man. I mean, it's it's my support system. If right. I if I and if I'll say this, if I had if I had brought everyone in my support system into this room right now, it would be oh, people be up. flowing outside. <laughs> yeah, man, it's crazy. I mean, whether whether that's people you know who are still with me, still not, who have passed away, um, you know, family, friends, coaches, man, teachers. Oh man, it, it, it it's crazy. It's crazy, but. I think, you know, I've been able to capitalize on those opportunities just because of the support system that I've had. And it's been, it's been, it's, it's been a blessing for real. So yeah. you keep touching back on the support system and I love that for you because yeah. it's just the fact that like they have put you, not necessarily put you on a standard, but they have set it, they have set a standard, a standard yeah. really high, yeah, a no bar doubt. really high. Yep. And pretty much like, I hope they realize that the bar they they keep setting for you, it's always going to be accomplished and yeah. always going to be overcome. Because just from 
talking to you today, I feel like you are a really hard worker. Yeah. And you can't just get like that overnight, you know? Yeah. So like going along the same line, like you were touched on it, like track is different hours consistently. Yeah. Put in hours and hours. When your body gets tired, how do you still keep your mind go from go, uh, yeah. keep going? I mean, I always go back to this quote that my mom used to always tell me, and she would always tell me, um, life is a series of tests. And she would tell me that right before like an exam at school. And I'd be like, and at first when she told me that like back in high school, elementary school, I'd be like, man, like she's just to like, she, when she says that she's just talking about tests, like she's just like, and I'd be stressed out for the test. She, she says life is a series of tests in terms of like, you just go through a bunch of uh, uh, tests throughout school. But as I grew up and I just realized this last week was, bro, she meant that in all oh. aspects of life, whether that's with friends, you know, with family, if, you know, you're not doing well in school, you know, something happens, it's, you know, your morals are tested, your character is tested, all that stuff. And so, I mean, for me, I always try and go back to that. It's like, hey, man, I'm, oh, I'm being tested right now right how am i going to respond am i going to cave in and am i going to fold or am i going to say no nah, man fuck this i'm going to face this and i'm going to keep i'm going to keep pushing and that's some shit just um touch on one thing he said um he said like his mom used to say like oh yeah, life is a series of tests like i think we take our parents for granted like a lot of oh, times yeah, you go through life and and you get to the stage where you you 20 21 22 19 type shit you start getting on your own a lot more and it's like, damn, she, you, you remember some shit she said 10, 5, 5, 10, 15 years ago. And it's like, damn, that's what she was talking about. Yeah. She was right the whole time. But you, you, you got to go through and be like, damn, man, she, she yeah. knows what she's talking about from the, from the get go type shit. I, I just hope that you realize that before it's too late. Right. Oh, yeah. Because most people that, you know, ha don't have the have folks around no more will always tell you how much they took them for granted. Yeah. And then you don't realize the pain until maybe one day they're not with you no more. You don't know how good you had it until it was gone. I was, oh, wow. I was also saying that to say like shit, you, you, you give your, your, you give credit to the, like your um, family members and shit like that. You see a lot of times with people who like are successful and got shit going on, they're like, I did all this by myself. This was all me. Right. Type all that type shit. They they don't give credit to everybody who helped them out the, all along the way. Type shit. Not just family members. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because for me, that's that's not what happened, <laughs> right? right? I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say, hey, man, I came from the trenches or I came, you know, without oh, yeah. without a dad. Yeah. Nah, man. Like I, mean, right. I, I, I I had it. I had it. I had it good. You know, I, growing up, I had it good. But I mean, what also comes with that is, man. T Grizzly said something. Um, I forget what the line was. I mean, you guys might remember with Kylie Jenner. He's like. You know, me and Kyle, me and Kylie Jenner were the same age, and I'd be like, "Damn, she got a billion. But at the end of the day, I can't, and I only have a million. But at the end of the day, she came from millions, and now she has a billion. I came from nothing. Right. I don't know it's if you guys different. ever heard that line. I don't, I don't remember it. But I mean, it's one of the things for me where it's like, you know, hey, I, I didn't come from nothing. You gotta right. love the journey. Yeah, you just gotta love the journey, man. You, you gotta, gotta love- you know, and we're all, we, we all have, we're all dealt different cards. Oh yeah. Right. And at the end of the day, it's. I'm gonna play my cards though. <laughs> I'm hoping you better play your cards yeah, too. Nah, exactly, bro. Exactly. It's like we're all out here. We all are come from different situations, come from different places. But how do you make the most of your opportunities? That's what defines you, and that's you know that's what separates the good from the great. Hundred percent. Because like it's like a game of poker. Yeah. Just because you might think you have terrible cards, don't mean. On play sometimes. Yeah. That's why they got a poker face for a reason. Yeah, exactly. You got to play your cards. It's any card game. You got to play your cards because we are we are given different right. hands. We are all given. I don't know your hand. You don't know my hand. I don't know your hands. Nah. But we all still gonna play the game though. Exactly. And exactly. I think it's the people that should. Going back to like actually doing it is the people that actually play their hand. You like gotta you play. It's niggas. Niggas. I'm a fool. Nope. I ain't gonna play. Yeah. It's niggas who right. do that in real life. Oh. I'm cool here. I'm gonna stay right here. And then yep. this niggas, man, we, we finna play, it, bro. We finna, we finna <laughs> throw on the table on his ass. He don't know what I got. We, we, we finna keep this poker face and we finna kind of like fake it till you make it type shit, but they use it in the oh, right yeah. way. Oh, yeah. Um, type shit. Like, we, we it's, it's the game of life. You did, we all yeah. dealt a set of cards and we gonna play. See who come out on top. Yeah, 100%. Like, there's no, and 
the only thing too though, there's no fair rules to life. Yeah, no, <laughs> you gonna have to play. And this this is what I love about university, man, is that you know touching back on my friend who come from a whole nude environment, right? Like when we we come from wherever we come from, right? We we might drive different cars, or we might have you know we might be in a different tax bracket. You know, I know y'all are finance majors, so. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when you come to university, man, everyone is equal. You are humbled. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. Everyone is given the same opportunities, no matter where you come from, no matter what you look like, no matter what you've done. Everyone here is, you know, here to ed- get an education, here to better themselves, and it's about who's going to make the most of it and who's going to take it for granted. I'm going to say college is like the one place where you kind of don't see mommy and daddy money. It's like, nah. yeah, from a certain extent, you can to like where they live and I guess the car they driving. But yeah. other than that, shit, we all we all at point A right now. We all starting off at the same place. Oh, and, yeah. and it's like, yeah, some people might have to worry about money type shit. They might yeah. have to work a job a little bit earlier, but it's like still we all starting at that same place yeah. when it comes to the schooling part, the college, the actual college part, we all starting in the same place. Nah, it's all our first time living on our own, really. This is all our first time, like, having to really take care of ourselves type shit without our parents. So it's like, we all starting at the classes same. classes your parents. Yep. Yeah, we yeah. all starting at the same place, bro. And so, I mean, that's a big thing I learned um, as a trustee. It was like, you know, when I when I wasn't able to become trustee, you know, when I when I that time when I had been elected and I was, you know, and before I was told, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I kind of looked down on people. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would like look down on certain people and be like, hey man, you're not you're not as good as I am, right? And that was, and that's wrong. That's wrong. No, no, no. You, you can't do that. But I mean, it was a humbling experience um, for me personally to be like, man, you know, I, I was treating people like shit and. Uh, and you know you got to treat people right, man. Because people, people's the game at the end of the day. One so. thing I learned from that is shit is always somebody bigger and better, and it's always oh, somebody that's worse off than you. Yep. Never get too high, never get too low with shit like that. One of my favorite quotes um, is, um, "I bet you, man, if all of us put all of our problems in a pile, in an instant, you would take your shit back and run." Oh yeah, because <laughs> I it's like pretty much like this. What I go through, I'm the only person capable of going through it. Yeah. What you go through, you're the only person capable of going through it. I'm not going to switch my problems from your problems. I don't know how bro, you, you deal with like, it. I, hey, give me your life. Give me my life back, bro. Give me that yeah. shit back. I, I want my life back. This <laughs> yeah. shit, that shit wasn't that bad, man. It's, bro, it's, like, <laughs> it's like the devil you know it versus the devil you don't know. Yeah. Oh, nine times out of ten, you're going to go with the devil you know because you know how to navigate that situation. Yeah. hundred percent. And I feel like ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> shit, give me my, give me my shit. I'm gonna start yeah, running the quickest thing. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about school though. For y'all, y'all, y'all finance majors. I mean, we talked a little bit about financial literacy right. off off camera. T- talk about that, man. So me, me, for me personally, I think finance and budgeting should be a class that's taught from fifth grade and up. The moment, the moment kids can, the moment you start actually giving kids insane amount of homework, yep, that's when like they should at least try to teach that just to you know, cause they're still kids, they're still young, it could be ingrained in their head, even if they don't want to apply it, cause not everybody gonna you know apply certain things to teach them, right? So even if they don't want to apply it, just make sure they have the background knowledge on that. That's my only take on that. Yep. Okay. Yep. How about you? Oh man, I I just think shit. I love money. <laughs> you got to <laughs> that, That's not why I mean it's kind of why I did, no, It's but, cool It's cool But I love money man I love learning about money I love Learning new ways To make money Yep um, I like I, I don't know I'm kind of like the um, I like looking at the ways You can make money Behind the scenes type shit So I, I right. like looking at the um, Oh the Production type shit I like looking at the Oh the executive type shit yep. Oh he's, he's the chief or He's a Chief financial officer type shit like that. Yeah. The, the people that is like, you don't really know what they fucking job entails, but you know that they making some money, you know they handling important shit. Um, yep. I, I think that's that's the biggest thing. And then, like you said, um, I do think that from around that fifth grade, sixth grade type shit, um, you should have shit. Really, you can start it in fucking second grade, have it to the basics of um, what is investing, what yep. is um, what does budgeting mean, what yep. is finance, what is what is, like just very simple, simple, simple type yeah. um, financial literacy. I think that that should be started. But again, you know, 
if, if you know why the school system was invented, <laughs> <laughs> you know, shit like that, then he, you, you know why you know we why? can't. But, you know, why? you know, I do, th- I think th- that would be something right. uh, nice it would change to see the game. happen. It would change oh, the game. Man. But of course, it would probably won't game. ever. But yeah, um, I think, I just think money, learn about money is cool. Learn to, um, and again, that that's money makes the world go round. Yeah. Um, money runs the world. So I think that if you figure out how to make money in a lot of different situations, you're never really at a need for, you know, you never really, you never really stuck in a rat race type shit. Yeah. And a lot of people. Oh, before you say some, yeah. a lot of people only know how to make money in one type of way. Yeah. Let's clock in and clock yeah. out. Oh, that is nine to five. Yeah. Let's clock in and clock out. I never want to be in that situation where it's uh-huh. like, damn, you can't. I can't do nothing to make no money, but go to some type of organization and work for somebody else. Yeah. Damn, I, I I need a little bit, a little bit more than that. So yeah. And then, this is probably the most simplest tip I could give to anybody that's willing to you know, get their yeah, financial, you know, career or goal started. It's pretty much like, whenever you get paid from whatever job you do, yeah, ninety five job, please, please, please pay yourself first. Before you before you pay for your rent, before you pay for all that extra shit, pay yourself first. Start off, let's say your let's say you make five hundred dollars, your rent is four hundred. Yeah, four. Before you pay your rent, you give yourself fifty dollars. Yep. You, you pay yourself first, fifty dollars. So now you are four fifty. Rent is gone. Whatever you got to pay for is also gone. And now you, now you got fifty dollars. And then before, don't blow that. Just do that for twelve months straight. Save it. You are six hundred dollars, buddy. Yeah. Say, oh, you are six hundred dollars, and then if you want to invest, go ahead and invest. If you want to go buy that shit, go ahead and buy that shit. Yeah, I think once you once you focus on your money, man, and just managing it, controlling it, that just just help yeah. out all everything else in life. Shit, if it you makes, if you trying to go to the gym, it, it make it you you get so into routines. Easier. Like okay, let me go to the gym, so I'm not spending no money on restaurant shit. I'm not. Just out doing shit aimlessly. Let me let me go to the gym, do this. Let me yep. let me go read type shit. Let me get on the meal plan type shit. Yeah. I, I guess that's the one area where money may you may be um, spending a little bit more money is the food area. But even then, eating out, nigga, a lot of people just eat out. They don't yeah. even cook, so they yeah. wasting money like that. So you might yeah. as well waste the money on some actual shit that tastes good and that's actually healthy yeah. type shit. Yeah, or even like investing, man. I mean, you know, I, I wish people would know the difference between you know good debt and bad debt but even 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 before that man it's like building credit right like you a college student get a credit card you got yeah. a credit card get, get a credit card get a credit card. what's that you got one i got two, got two. <laughs> how long you had it? um i've had one for about a year now i've had one for maybe uh four months the second one for four months okay so i mean yeah man it's like it's, it's building credit you know uh, why, why do we build credit so you can get a loan Right. What is that? What, what are you when, gonna get a loan for? Your when you, house. When you get out of college, you you gonna want if you're not living with your folks, you are gonna need a crib. You gonna yeah, need a you gonna need a, a car. You gonna need all types of shit. So you might as well just go ahead and get your credit card stuff. And also right now, bro, you're not you don't really spend much. You spend let's say you spend fifty dollars a, a week. Let's say you spend fifty dollars a week on yeah. on on some Mary Jane, right? And some you know alcohol. That's literally, bro. Put that shit on your credit card. Pay that shit off, bro. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like, man. A credit card is dangerous to, to a lot of folks, person, bro. Like, it, it's like we're not telling you to go get a credit card and be like, oh, um, go buy the designer. Go buy, go, go, go buy a hundred dollar dinners and shit like that. Go, go spend it on a whole bunch of shoes and bullshit like that. Like, no, we saying. Like he said, build credit. Don't go out. Don't don't. Okay, yeah, my credit limit. They gave me a thousand to start off with. Okay, cool. Don't go spend nah. eight hundred of that on um, bullshit. On bullshit, and then be like, okay, I got two hundred left. Let me try to budget this. But it's like <laughs> some shit come up, hundred going. You got to put some gas in the tank. Forty fifty going right there. Bro, that could have been one hundred and fifty that you just spent only instead yeah. of that eight hundred dollars worth of bullshit. And then going along that same line too. This is not a financial advice, but if you can use it, implement it. If your credit card limit is, you said a thousand dollars, try to sp- try to keep it as low as thirty percent. Nah, fuck it. That is financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. Keep it under thirty. That's that is financial advice. <laughs> Just keep it as low as below thirty as possible, and you yeah. should be you're gonna be straight if you're spending. Hundred dollars you spend thirty, you could pay thirty dollars off. 
Yeah, I mean, because I mean, it takes time to build it, right? And even if you're just buying groceries, right? Or even if you know you're just spending it on, you know, you're like, you only putting like fifty bucks on it, right? Make sure you got the money. But you know, once you pay it off, you pay it off in time, man. You build credit, and I mean, I just I, I wish people, you know, w- would I wish it was more pushed to us, right? Like, hey, man, this is how you can, this is how you can, you know, start building your life, man. At eighteen, at eighteen, you can get a credit card, right? And it's like from there you can just start making the steps that you make now are going to pay off so much more in the future but for some reason i mean why are we gatekeeping this information bro because they get let me tell you something yeah the less people didn't know it the better (laughs) and that's 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 a scary thing that's how that's how the waters run yeah they keep information private and also some people put information out but also not everybody's willing to go learn about these informations for themselves. People rather people rather tell you, okay, you can make a million dollars right now, just do this, and they'll do that. But you, the moment you tell somebody, do research, go study, yeah. go do this. Oh my God, it requires so much hours. I'm gonna just go to bed. I was to say, man, it's, it's like, I don't know, people think like getting rich or successful is like a, a, a quick one, game. It's a, one, they think it's a quick game, uh-huh. and they think it's a one-way street. Mm-hmm. They think it's just a one way street down an interstate. They know twists, turns, tunnels, and nothing like nothing. Nah. Like, bro, it's gonna be some bumps in the road getting to a million, a hundred, whatever your number is. Yeah. Getting to that point, it's gonna be some shit that knock you upside the head, bro, and, yep. and really test you. Type so like you said, going back, life is just a, a series of tests, bro. That's yeah. on the way to that whatever number, on the way to that first million, bro. You are gonna be tested a hundred, probably a hundred thousand times, yeah. and then. Another quick tip too, remove your emotions. Yeah. Don't. I know me and Ricky, we love money, <laughs> but but when you're letting your love money, it. when you're letting your money work for you, remove your emotions. Yeah. Don't. No doubt. Don't. Don't be mad that you're spending money to make money. Oh, yeah. when it yeah. doesn't go, when it doesn't go right the first couple of times, don't quit just because it didn't go right the first couple of times. Try a new way. Should take time, man. I, I I think that's the number one thing people time gotta realize. Making money takes time. Um, whether that shit, you gotta work a job. That shit take time. Investing that shit takes time to get a return on an investment. Yeah, type of shit. Um, that that shit takes time, bro. You gotta let shit formulate. Gotta let people see the value in things. Shit just takes time to to actually come into yeah. life, man. Nah, man. Hundred percent. Hundred percent, man. And, Going along that same line too, I feel like, like the society that we are growing up in or that we are in is just social media has made life seem so much easier than it yeah. is. But just me, like you go on Instagram, you you scroll through somebody, you might see, oh, this person got on all these type of cars, got all these type of jewelry on, got this nice, got got this nice house, got all this type of stuff, but you don't realize the amount of work they had to put into a, to attain that lifestyle yep. you don't realize all that stuff and you just think it's so easy it's just like everybody sees the end product like I, I don't I don't know man people just gotta understand that everybody had to go through something yeah 100%. like I, I could just put it in simple terms in terms of this podcast y'all seeing the end product of this podcast y'all seeing the, the end result of this podcast yeah. y'all didn't see everything that went on to uh-huh. make this shit come together y'all didn't see the text messages had to get in contact y'all didn't yep. see the setup part like shit like that. that that's that's everything in life that's just like with you when they come to see you at the decathlon they yeah. didn't see you in the gym nah. oh, no. <laughs> they didn't see you putting in a 20 nah, hour weeks nah. they also don't see the shit that you miss out on right exactly. I see you see some of my homies be going out I'm like ah oh, man I can't. I got. I got to go to bed, bro. I got practice tomorrow. <laughs> right? <laughs> Prioritize. But yeah. Sorry. Sorry to cut you off. Nah, nah. You good? They just. They people just. You don't see what comes with everything, bro. It's, everybody has a different route and everything that everything that they're yep. doing, bro. And so it's a lot that goes into success, man. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean, we all. At the end of the day, man, we all bleed red. We all come from mm-hmm. the same place, man. And it's like whatever opportunity you get, you know, make the most of it. And unfortunately. You know, some people could have, you know, just a little sliver of an opportunity, right? And some people could have a, you know, a whole, you know, whole pathway of opportunities. But I think the thing is that we can't gatekeep this information of an opportunity because if you don't know what an opportunity looks like, how are you supposed to make the most of it? Of it. Okay. Right? And so for anyone, man, young kids that you're mentoring, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Teammates, you know, classmates, all that stuff, peers, like tell them like, you know, 
get involved, man. If, if you have an opportunity, make sure you make the most, make sure you identify it and make the most of it. Cause man, at the end of the day, man, I mean, you might only get one shot, bro. You it, might only get one shot. Like, you might, I say this all the time, at least to myself, people might think I'm crazy or anything like that, but check it out. If my homie, if my friend can play a role better than I can play a role, I am 100% okay with giving them that role. Yeah. We're not, we're not team players, though, man. It, it, it just go back to like Fat Joe said. He said shit. All his life, he been a number two guy. No, yeah. All his life, he said, man, I, I've been a number two guy, and, and I'm fine with that. It's, um, it's just some people don't know when to give up that role for somebody else to come play that role and lead it right. But it's like you got to look at it. If I let him play this role, I know he better at. Maybe I could go find something else that I'm also good at, and together we go. We to go the top. to the top. top. Yeah. <laughs> together we go to That's the all. top. Yeah. That's all it is. Maybe if, if he's clearly better at this, let me let me. If if we're working on the same team, if right. we're working same on a, a joint project together. If I see somebody else that can help the team out, type shit. I'm gonna be like, hey, you come over here work on this type of shit, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the other avenue where I think I'll be successful at. Yeah, and then yeah. I'm gonna go do a, I'm gonna put in a hundred percent effort because I know you're gonna put a hundred percent effort in what you're doing too. Yeah, right, it it's it's about going back to your support system, right? I mean, if you guys got the same mindset, you guys can make it work. That's your support system, man. Just roll with it. Yes, but I feel like also a lot of people got. <laughs> and motherfucker We call ego Ego and pride A lot of people yeah. got those So you know It's just They can just set that shit aside And just be like Okay but that's what I'm saying Me personally I'm comfortable with giving my friend Or my homie That yeah. role to play If I know that they're better than me That's why I speak for me When I say that Cause a lot of people are Gonna be look at you Be like hold on You just gonna give up your spot right. Just cause Right 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 The whole time If that's a million dollar empire Why fuck it up Right I'm gonna say, man, ego is like one of those. Ego is a good thing and a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. Um, ego is good when in terms of oh, yeah. confidence and yeah. When you know what, what shit, when you need to have that ego, um, and shit in business, you kind of need to have a little bit of oh, ego. Yeah. Um, dealing with it's some, like a chip some on the people, and, yeah, you kind of had to, you got to have that, or else yeah. people really ain't gonna respect you. Oh yeah, um, they're not gonna look at you as an authority figure. So I think like yeah. ego is good in that way, but it's also bad to a point where. Like you said, man, motherfuckers just be stubborn when it comes yeah. to things. They, they, I don't care what what information, what data, to, what proof you give them, they're gonna be stuck in this way. Like, no, I think I'm the better person. This, this, and right. that. He never be better than me. But you got, you got to be realistic, bro. Yeah. You got to be realistic with yourself. Yeah, I want to shift a little bit. Ask you guys another question. What okay. you, what you guys think about like as finance majors, like the recession type stuff that everyone's talking about right now? What do you, what do you guys thinking? Spit some knowledge on that. So pretty much. What I'm what I'm gonna say is pretty. Much, it's not a financial advice. I'm gonna say this. Real like when it, when we get out of college is gonna be the best time to get a crib. Like okay. to get like yeah. I feel like I agree. I feel like it's just gonna be so much cheaper when we get out yeah. of college. And no doubt, I hope people actually see like you don't gotta love the economy or finance to know what's going on. <laughs> like you really don't. Like just keep your eyes open. To a lot of shit that goes on, and you you gonna be fine. Like you don't gotta be the smartest person in the room to know what's going on. Yeah, we said uh, what was our opinion on recession, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's a good thing, um, especially for us. We're in college right yeah. now. We don't really have too many, yeah. too much expenses. We're not. We don't have a mortgage. We don't have. Um, some people might have a car note, but a lot of us don't have a car note. We're pretty much paying things on a fixed rate that aren't really affected too much by right. what's going on. Um, besides food, a little bitch like that, but yeah, not not too much. Um, okay. So I think it's a it's a it's a blessing for us to even be going through this. Yeah, and sorry, um, fin you finish, and then I'm, a, and then I'm a, yeah. I, I just that. think it's a blessing for us to be going through this, especially as finance majors, yeah. as people that pay attention to pay attention to money, pay attention right. to finance. Right. Right. I market. think it's a it's a market. it's a blessing yeah. because it's like we're at a point where emotionally we can deal with things going up and down. We're at a point where um, mentally it's like okay I can grasp what's going on here on a global standpoint right. on, a, right, on right, a, right. a world on a just a, a macro standpoint I'm I can just understand what's going on I just yep. think it's a blessing like that man and and that's the thing and then I'm, I'm so happy y'all are touching on it in that way because um when we social media has made us think of the word recession like oh shit 
we're all gonna be broke, yada yada. But in reality, bro, in a recession, I mean, you hit the nail on the head, bro. Like, that's when you're gonna buy a crib because that's when prices are gonna drop. That's when everything gets cheaper. I mean, you make the right investments. Um, you just gotta be patient, right? It's about timing. During the recession, that's when the most millionaires are made. Oh yeah, right. Oh yeah, and to touch on that, that that gap is about it's about to get really, seen, really, really fat. Yeah. I seen something they said by twenty thirty. I forgot what number it was, but it was some outrageous number. Like yeah. it's gonna be the new number of millionaires by the year twenty thirty. Right. And that's only six years or uh, seven years away. Yeah. Type shit. Yeah, seven, seven, eight. Yeah. yeah seven yeah, years yeah, away. Yeah. We damn near twenty twenty three, bro. Yeah. Like that, that's seven years away to think of Damn, I could be one of the people. What? Yeah. What? Bro, you could be a you could be made a millionaire within six months to be changed the way you think. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. You become a millionaire within six months, change the way you think, put a, a plan into action, and then right. What is it saying? You all are, the chips gonna fall. You are a millionaire in your head way before. Oh, way, way before, before the paper. Uh, dude, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And so, man, this is you know again we talk about opportunities, right? This is an opportunity. For people to, you know, be be put on, you know, people to know, like, hey, man, like, don't be scared of a recession, dog, right? Obviously, you know, make your bread, save it, don't be, don't be blowing it on stupid shit. Because at the end of all this, I mean, you could buy a crib. Op- opportunity is coming. Yeah. That's how I'm going to put it. Yeah. That's, yeah. All, that's how I'm going to put it. I, and not just in, <laughs> ah, shit, I, I do want to get into real estate and shit like that. So, yeah. of course, I'm, I'm looking at homes, apartments and shit like that, prices and shit like that. But not just in real estate shit and, and stocks. Opportunities yeah. coming. Great, great opportunities are, are, are yeah. on, shit already here. And are <laughs> on, on the way, way yeah. too. On the way, man. Um, yeah. Crypto, I don't think that crypto is going anywhere. It's not no. going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a financial Great product, opportunities are here and on the way with that. NFTs, I was never really on that wave. Um, yeah. Like we, we, we seeing some very interesting <laughs> shit. Yeah. 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 NFTs, yeah. Um, I was never on the wave yeah. really, but it, it was kind of interesting to see what's happening. Uh, what happened and what's still happening right. so I, I think i think nfts kind of give kind of give like the crypto and like the blockchain and that kind of like like uh e-currency stuff kind of like a bad rep but i mean again i mean you, you talked about it right you know just because the first time don't get emotional just because the first time it doesn't work out it could it could it's gonna work it could work the second time third time you just got to be on it and you got to be ready but you also gotta be. You gotta be. You gotta do your own research. You gotta study. Right. You gotta. You gotta be a student of the game. Yeah, dude. One hundred percent. You gotta study. One hundred percent, man. One hundred percent. But also at the same time, I mean, study. But also, I mean, in in track. I mean, I can watch as many track videos as I want. Read as many track books. You, you gotta. But I gotta go it, out there. Put it into action. I gotta put it. Put in some work, man. So whatever that looks like, whether that's getting a paper trading account, into which action. for those who don't know, it's it's a it's like a stock account. It's like a fake stock account where you have money. And you can make real time trades with the market. It's similar. It's the exact same market, except you're just trading with fake money. And you can test out your strategies, and you can see what you have, um, whether it, you make money or not. And I mean, that's a great place to start. Say it one more time for people listening. It's a paper trading account. You can do that through Robinhood. You can do that through Thinkorswim, um, Webull, all these things, man. It, it's it's like a practice. It's like a it's a practice field, bro for you to practice with stocks, with fake money, and for you to try out your strategies and see if you're going to make money or not. Yes. And then, also, before we even end this podcast, I wanted to touch on this. Look, yep. I'm going to put shit in perspective. Bro, we in college right now. This is the only time, I'm going to say, in your life where you can make a lot of financial decisions and still bounce back. Yeah. And you know why? Because you got time on your side. Yep. Everybody in their late 30s, 40s, 50s will tell you, you got time on your side. You want to try an investment? Go for it. It don't work out. You got, you got time to come back. Do it. If, if yeah. you have 50, if, no, if you're 30 and you lose $10,000, you might be, you're going to be pissed off. Yeah. If you're, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. If you're 20, look at it like this. You're going to be mad. You're not gonna be pissed off. You're gonna be mad, but look at it like this: you can make, you got the whole rest make of your back. life to make it back. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna bounce back. So when I am 30, when I, am 25, <laughs> I didn't already, I didn't already went through the losing 10, 10 racks phase. Yeah. You know, I didn't already, I didn't already experience that. I already knew, I know what not to do. So when I'm 25, 30, 20, however old, I, I just know how to move when I get that type of money. So oh yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah, I think we all gonna fuck up a bag. Oh yeah, oh, before, oh, we, yeah. Fuck yeah. before we get, oh, yeah. Yeah. before we get on, on <laughs> yeah, we gonna fuck, fuck up a couple bags, bag. yeah, a couple bags. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna fuck up a couple bags. But it's 
the it's the keep it's the the ones that keep going after they fuck up the bags. How that mental that that mental capacity be like? Okay, I didn't fucked up. I mean, what did I do wrong? It's it's not what happens to you. It's how you, you react, react to what happens to you. That's defining your character, man. Say that one more time. It's not. <laughs> It's not what happens to you that will define your character. It's about how you react to what has happened to you that will define your character. Man, man, hit it right on the head. Hey, Gems. Man. <laughs> Gems. We, we're an hour strong, man. man. We're an hour plus strong. Hey, man. man, I felt like I've been here for five minutes. I love this shit, <laughs> man. Hour strong. Hey, man. but, man, thank y'all for bringing me out here because I've seen, I seen y'all, y'all fucking grow. Man, I mean, y'all used to Thank like you. you said y'all used to quarter on a, on a phone, man. Absolutely. And y'all y'all keeping up the hustle, man. Y'all y'all blocking out the haters. Y'all are, y'all keeping it real. Um, got to got out to. work and out last, bro. That's the name of the game. Yeah. <laughs> out work and out last. <laughs> and then before we let you go, you mind you know sharing your Instagram so that where they can reach you at and get in touch with you? Yeah, hundred percent. So my Instagram is Anil underscore Gillen. So that's A N. E E L underscore last name's Gillen G I L L A N. Instagram's our main thing, so yeah, man, give me a follow. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to have you on here, man. Free sauce, please, please don't stop learning. Never stop learning, man. It's the fucking free sauce podcast. We out. And we out. You see, I'm wishing you all Godspeed.